Here's yours. Well, let's get it. Ready? Ready? Who's timing we go off of? You go, Chris. You the All boss. Right. When we hit the three, okay? One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! Cheers, Welcome to boys. Champ Chat with yeah. Mike and Chu yeah. Yeah. with special guest Kellen in the house. Yes, sir. love it. My boy, what's up, big dog? How Man. are you? Very good, very good. Check the place where we're at. Look at the lighting, Mike. How do you like the lighting in here? Dude, it's absolutely awesome. We're over here at Premier Barbershop in Alamoana. Check them out, guys. Kellen, give a quick plug real quick to your barbershop. Talk, give a shout out to your uh, workers real quick and what's going on over here. Tell, tell the people. <laughs> We've been here for five years. We're above Barnes & Noble in Ala Moana. Mm -hmm. We're in the old uh, Shirakia at Ala Moana, <laughs> Macy's End by uh, La Palme Dior and Manny Petty. Uh, uh, yep, what, what's yep. La uh, Palme Dior? Is that a bread place? It's a bakery. Yep. Uh, yep, yep, yep I've yep. been to that place. Fire, dude. Everybody loves it. That yeah. place is so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how's the barbershop? You got some beasts in here? <laughs> Never. Uh, Never? Yeah. What do you mean? We're good. We're good. You some, we love it. You got some talent. Yeah. Dude, um, I, I, so having a barber is like a big part of, uh, you know, like being a guy. You know what I mean? Like having a good, do you have, do you have a go-to barber that you go to? <laughs> Over here? So, or yes. Or do you, do you jump around to all the, all, the, all the guys? When I started, for sure, I was in, um, I was out, Rodney, my partner. Yeah. Uh, I went to him, saw what he could do. He's booked solid all day, every day. So, yeah. when I started to open up and we had the barber shops and we had barbers coming in, then I got decided, like, I gotta give everybody a chance. I gotta get cut by everybody. Yeah. You gotta just test them yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. As the owner, you gotta show some love. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. I, then I took it to where I could have a little bit of a impromptu meeting with everybody too. Like, what do you mean by that? Just like get to know them, talk story, yeah. have them cut me. Like, just oh yeah. You know, be there with yeah. them and you know, like, what's good, what's bad, what what do you need help with? What do you yeah. need? You know, what do you need from us? Talking story while getting the clip, getting the haircut. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, and even just like. How's life going? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? How are you Try to point the mm. mic a little bit more to you. Yeah, help him out, Chris. Right. There you go. There yeah. you go. Right that. Just yeah. like that. There we go. But yeah. Um, Do you know how to cut hair too? Hell no. No. You yeah. don't? No, oh, no. strict businessman, huh? So I have good clippers for my son. Mm. And I'll cut his hair, but... You you don't want me cutting your hair. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice ball. Get the rice ball, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to his hair when you cut his hair? Because he's like a teenage boy. I'm sure he's kind of... So he, he gets a good cut, and then I can do a good uh, two-week cleanup. Oh, yeah. But once he gets beyond that... I'm good at the Yeah, yeah. Once he gets beyond that, I'm kind of like a... I can try, but you yeah, should go yeah. to the shop. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. different when you're... So like the edgers, like my whole life growing up, we always edge ourselves up. Like these edgers you see back here. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're all over. But yeah. we, we would always just clean up our whatever, yeah. this and that. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah. all know. How, but doing a fade and shit, like, that's different. You know what I mean? Well, so, like, so if I can see the lines, I can see the setup. Like, yeah. I can I can get there. Mm -hmm. But once it gets, like, one month, two months yeah, on, yeah, I'm yeah. like, mm, yeah. yeah, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you don't want me doing yeah. it. Yeah, he won't be happy you. with that no, one. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. And what I'm like, well, if you want a barbershop, why are you going to have me do it? Like, that's, that's not smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Facts. Do you have multiple locations? Isn't there like multiple locations of this? I've seen it around. Yeah. So we actually opened up in uh, Bethel Street downtown. Nice. That was our original. We opened up in 2017 now. Mm -hmm. uh, was that the old Mojo's? Or? We're right up the street from Mojo's. Oh. Does, Mojo, does Mojo's still there? So Mojo's is now vintage. Oh, okay. And we're probably like four or five uh, doors up. Mm hmm. Um, and yeah, we opened up in 2017. I was still working downtown. I was at American Savings Bank. I did a lot of commercial work. So I had a lot of business owners, their employees and everybody just coming through. And it, it, was, it was great. Like we were busy. Our shop had six chairs. We did good work like all day, every day, busy. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the board at UH Manoa, Shiloh Business School, and oh. that's when we got offered wow. a space here. Awesome, dude. And um, it, was, it was a good and bad because obviously I know business, the mall's expensive. Yeah. But our, our big picture was to, you know, do well, expand globally, do Japan, do oh. mainland, do With everything. With Premier? Yeah. yeah. As a franchise? 
as a franchise. Oh, so, yeah. so, so like, why not do Ala Moana, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And knowing like Kahala Mall, Windward Mall, Pearl Ridge, some hotels were more expensive. I was like, okay, well, if we can get in at Ala Moana, let's let's do it. Yeah. And we opened up. We what's the uh, what's the lease around here? <laughs> Goes by square footage, right? Yeah. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. Damn. So it was we got, we got in early. So Lanai Food Court was kind of just starting up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We that, were, that freaking added a lot of value to the, all these. Yeah. <clears throat> so they, they had a few spots that were still vacant. They mm -hmm. still needed to build out, open up, whatever. So we opened in August 2018. Mm -hmm. We did what we did. We were busy enough. We had enough clientele. Yeah. But once that mall, the, you know, Lanai Food Court got busy, busy. Yeah. Like, you can't find a seat. Yeah. Every, every shop's open. Yeah. Everybody's eating and you know being entertained and whatever yeah we got busy mm. we had 13 chairs here busy all day every day wow and then covid hit march 2020 yeah and good or bad like we were so busy and then you were shut down yeah, yeah. and then it's like I remember you during those times. Yeah, it was you like, were stressing a little bit small kind No, of yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's totally stressing cuz Yeah. You got this lease, though, you got to pay. Have, Did you, you still have to pay the lease? You even? have a lease that you have to pay. Even though when it was COVID and it was shut down, you still had to pay that monthly. And you got a big uh, conglomerate like Brookfield, who's the, you know, leasehold here. And you have to do what you have to do. So yeah. uh, luckily, they were very forgiving. And we ended up just extending our lease mm -hmm. and finding a way to negotiate it out. But... It's it's never gonna be the same, right? Yeah. So barbershops, restaurants, bars. They never bounce back any, fully. Any retail, you know, space, it's hard to find workers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find people that wanna buy because you can buy anything online nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it is what it is. So for us, I feel very fortunate because it, anybody that knows me knows that when we have the shop open, yeah. we're busy. Yeah. But it's it's not the busy as before COVID. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, we're busy. I'm happy. We're we're surviving. We're we're open. We're yeah. like we're grinding. Yeah. And Meeting so the bottom line. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like I'm I'm very grateful, very fortunate, very happy that we have you know people that love us and mm -hmm. committed to us and you know we're it. like we we are very committed to our. But you guys are also a survivor. Survivor, for, for if you shut down during COVID, look at you now. You're still open. Yeah. yeah. That's a survivor story for, in my yeah. eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, because you, you p pounded through, through the hardships when it was shut down, but yet right now, 2023, you're still open. Yeah, yeah. You, you know? I, I mean, and good or bad or whatever, like luckily I was in banking. So there was a lot of programs that allowed for, you know, applying for PPP and allowing for EIDL. Yeah. And if you knew it, yeah, yeah. you're on top of it. You you're, you're applying it. Yeah. Like you're, you're doing it. I feel like a few businesses grew during COVID yeah, by, by taking advantage of a lot of those Exactly, because that was a lifeline. Like if yeah. you got that, if you could apply for it in early, you're getting money that you actually wouldn't have had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if your business could run, you're, you're in the clear. Like, yeah. But we were shut down. So, like, we're needing that money to just operate, yeah, to nice. stay open, to pay bills, to do whatever. And then when we actually can open, you know, hopefully we still survive. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if, if you're on top of it, it works out. Uh, luckily, I was in banking. So, like, I was applying day one for everything. Mm -hmm. And we got it. So, yeah. good or bad, like, we got it. It's loans. It's grants. It's whatever. We got, we got it waived. We got... Yeah, the idea that it's a loan, so we got to pay it back. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, like at the end of the day, like it's it's money part of business that it's it's cheap money that lets us survive. Mm, yeah. And nowadays, did it let you expand a little bit too, or no? Was it because you already had the business? Yeah, it, it, you already I had mean, this location, right? Not really, because yeah, we had two locations already. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you wanted to, I guess that would have helped us. But at the end of the day, like, I kind of understood the situation and it's like yeah. if we had any more locations if we sign leases yeah we're kind of screwed no. like we we would be in a in a bad situation if yeah. you know we sign with Windward mall if we sign with Pearl oh. Ridge, if we sign with some hotels in waikiki like it, it would be you are signed 
Mm-hmm. You have a lease. You have to pay that lease. Yeah. And whether you know you're open or not, they're gonna make you pay. Right. So you know, luckily we didn't sign those, but we still had two locations, and it was kind of like just survival mode. Like, mm-hmm. how can we survive? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Were, did you during COVID times? Did you take up any different side hustles, or did you like what? Did you do anything else while while uh, the barbershops are uh, yeah. closed? Yeah. So weirdly, like. I'm always open to whatever. Yeah. So I have a notary business mm-hmm. that just went gangbusters during COVID. Wow. You know, like I. What do you think? What do you think caused that? Uh, the world was closed down. Yeah. 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 So I was in banking, right? So uh-huh. um, I had probably four people that had notaries under me. Mm-hmm. I refused to get my own because that would just make me have to do notaries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But once I decided to leave the bank, I became a CFO somewhere. I opened the barbershops. I had the opportunity to buy a notary company. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to get my license. So I, I got it. And then at that time, refis were crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, rates were 2%, yeah. 3%. Um, I was doing notaries. I mean, I can say it now, like, no problem. It was 250 to 300 a notary wow. to sign wow. as a mobile notary. And we were doing 10 a day. Easy. Yeah. Ten. Just you That's or you had a team? So I, I was doing 10 myself. Wow. I was signing it out to maybe another two to five a day yeah, to yeah. other people that, you know, worked at the bank, had mm-hmm. their notary license, blah, blah, blah. How are you generating those leads? Like, like oh, it was, that's big numbers, dude. Yeah. So luckily it was you become a signing agent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you are uh, designated as that and they need people. Like there were, there was not enough notaries at the time in Hawaii, wow. and so capitalize on opportunity. He seized on the opportunity. Oh yeah. Man. So for me, I'm like, I I will do all of them. <laughs> so the the one day I did the most was probably like I I did 15 in one day. Damn. Wow. Easy like, money. Yeah. Right. That was legit printing money. No. I'm printing docs, signing docs, notarizing docs, like, mm-hmm. and I can do it in my car. So I have a I have a Tesla. Yep. Yeah. Drove everywhere all mm-hmm. day, every day. I have a printer in my car. Mm-hmm. I have a mobile generator. Yeah, wait, talk about a, being mobile. Damn, man. dude. Yeah. Wait, wait. We thought we were mobile. You yeah. have a printer in your car? I had a printer yeah. in my car. What the fuck? So uh, I, had, uh, I had, you know, probably set eight or nine meetings. That's funny. And man. I will just, if, if you need somebody, I got it. Like, done. Dude, Send, yeah. You, and you're mobile and with I your phone? Added it, added it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Print it, sign it. Notarize it. You're a fucking hustler, my dog. Easy money. Hustler. And for me, I'm like, it's COVID. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. Hey, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Where's the easy money right now? What's your your new hustle right now? So, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's easy, but I'm always looking for opportunities, right? Of course. I have the barbershops. I got notary. I do mortgages. Mm -hmm. Mortgages are terrible because rates are high. Mm. Um, I'm, I have my tattoo license now. Yeah. We're going to do scalp micropigmentation here at Premier Barbershop. Wow. We have a medical. That's coming up for my baldy boys. Yeah. yeah. We, we have a medical <laughs> grade room in the back. hairlining yeah. dogs. <laughs> so when we opened, we had a med- Medispa. Uh-huh. We had 10 to 15 nurses, uh, mm-hmm. all, you know, licensed and everything. They were doing um, laser hair removal, fat reduction, what? facials, everything. Fat reduction? Wait, let's talk about that. <laughs> How do they do that in the barbershop? So we have a medical grade room at the back. Wow. It's, it's all you know, approved. We have a doctor approved. And the machines are amazing. Right? Wow. Like, it's all machines now. Those yeah, machines yeah. are probably yeah. like 50, 100, 200 yes. grand, something exactly. crazy. And um, fortunately or un- unfortunately, like... Uh, COVID shut us down. Yeah. So we 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 don't have the people around. We don't have people walking in. We don't. You have still have the asking. machines and stuff. So uh, we were renting out that space. So oh. mm-hmm. that kind of shut down. But that made me think to what can we do as the barbershop? Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm like, scalp micropigmentation, yeah, yeah. which is hair tattoo, yeah. is the next step because we have all the clientele. I can you know literally sit here and like pick people out yeah. and I'm like, I, I could use it myself. Me so like, too. let's, let's do this. <laughs> you know, Yo, I'm a cut in a picture of my receding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm like, I just made 42 on Tuesday. Like I Damn, don't bro. deny it. Like 
You look at you got a good head of hair this for forty two. Is, is that all natural? I, what kind of steroid hair, hey, hair steroids you got, yeah, dog? All natural right now, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. looking good. But dude. I'm like, um, there, there's so many people that we cut, and I'm like, no offense, like we can make you look great. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And dude, like, I would do it. Yeah, sponsor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, would you do that? Can no, you? I don't. I'm never gonna yeah, go bald. You got a fucking like, great hair. Anyway, <laughs> never gonna go bald. Look how young I look. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Zoom in 4K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> women uh, lining up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, women. Yeah. They're the ones who's gonna spend the money. Well, yeah. so so the weird thing is like that's that's the that's the deal. It's like everybody has that little bit insecurity somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then, not me though. Not me. Not you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's but, just screaming insecurities yeah. right now. Let's get it. For women, and again, no offense, it's like th- they know when, when the part goes one way and the hairline goes one way, <laughs> and you can see scalp somewhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it would be great to just have it filled in. Yeah, and for me, I'm like, that was not a market I actually knew about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because we are a barbershop, I'm like, let's let's do it. Let's line up the their hairline, yeah. let's fill in the crown, let's do this and that. But when it comes down to it, it's like, we can do men, we can do women, we can do scar, you know, cover-ups, mm-hmm. we can do alopecia, we can do so much stuff that I'm like, mm, this is this is actually going to benefit a lot of people that, yeah. it's not even about money anymore. It's yeah. about, you know, just, you know, like just feeling good about yourself and yeah. taking care of Hawaii. And that's kind of where I started, you know, like just doing whatever because we, we do this as a business, mm-hmm. but I also, we do a lot of nonprofit work. Mm-hmm. I was on the board for UH Manoa, Shiloh Business School. We do every event that we can. Mm-hmm. I was for Make-A-Wish, uh, USC Alumni Club, like, oh. and uh, Philcom Center. So we're, we're trying to be a part of the community. Yeah. We're trying to give back. We're trying to be you know, a part of everything. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I was like, business is business. We want to make money, but uh, you know, like, really, we know Hawaii is... Word of mouth. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. how you take care of people. Exactly. It's who you know. It's, mm-hmm. you know, like it's all of that. So yeah. for me, you know, we got so much going on that we want to just take care of people. Yeah. And whatever happens, happens. Like we will take care of people. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving back, you know? <clears throat> yeah. For Dude, sure. speaking of uh, Mr. Schneider. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I tell you about Your that? Client, yeah. Yeah, man. He, yeah. Has, he has some pop. Yeah, yeah. He has some hands, actually. That's crazy. So let's say if I wanted to work here, you know, how, how does that, how do I get paid? Do I like rent out the stall or do you pay me or what kind of education or what, what kind of training do I have to do? Yeah. So, I mean, we really, we start with our downtown shop is next to the barber school. Okay. So we try to go there, you know, solicit the top barbers, make sure they know like we're, we're hopefully where you want to come. Mm-hmm. We we charge top dollar for a cut. We have a great space to how much know, is the cut operate. Here? We're at fifty five right now. Nice fifty five with a beer with a shot. Like yeah, yeah great experience. Um, and for us, like we want to think like you can get in here. We have the great clientele of Hawaii. It's locals here in Alamona. It's obviously like a lot of walk in so tourists. Uh, men, women, tro- children, like so, a lot of people, and for us, um, we'll we'll do a lot of everything. So mm-hmm. you you get in with us, we'll educate you, we'll do classes, we'll do um, apprenticeship, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's a process. Yeah. I mean, we we want to be open to everybody. If you have a great attitude, you know, like what we represent, which is client comes first, customer comes first. Hawaii is very. You know, word of mouth. So yeah, yeah. everybody knows everybody. Take care of the customer, and of course. you know, like yeah. we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, dude. Uh, one thing you're so professional. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like obviously you don't cut hair. Yeah. But you have a couple barber shops. Yeah. But if I recall, you went to like a convention, a haircut convention on the mainland. Like you took the time to fly out there to like yeah, yeah. really educate yourself. That says a lot. About you as a business owner, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, last year I went to Connecticut. There, It's the biggest, uh, you know, barber show in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we flew into New York. We took a train to Connecticut. Um, and, and for me, I was almost skeptical, like, what am I going to learn because I'm not a barber? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
But at the same time, it was like a very eye opening because the world is social media. Mm -hmm. And there's so many barbers now that will cut, charge huge amounts of money, cut, you know, you know, celebrities yeah. and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And There's like celebrity barbers they, pretty much. They are, they're famous. They're yeah, famous. Yeah. They're whatever. Celebrity barbers. And, you know, like in some type of ways, like you're like, eh, whatever, like that's weird. Like, yeah. you know, that's a different world. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there was one barber, um, Vic Blends, that he, he talked about, he was a barber and then COVID hit and then he's still a barber, but the business is not the same. Mm. So what he did is he started just cutting on the street, talking story, like talking to people about life, like kind mm. of this podcast, like yeah. mm. just talking about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. But doing it behind a camera kind. Doing it behind a camera and, yeah. and capturing that moment where yeah. I don't know you. Yeah. Let me ask you a question yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. And uh, like it, it, it was very touching because Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Of course. You, nobody yeah. knows what everybody's going through and nobody, yeah. you know, like, so it's, it's kind of like that, be kind to everyone. Yeah. Yes. And for him, it was be kind to everyone, give everybody a chance, do, do the cut, talk story and see what happens. That's cool. And that made me think like, that's no different anywhere. Like, yeah. and especially in Hawaii, like we, we care about everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the aloha. And, and that's where like, it, it made me think about it like, and something clicked where I'm not a barber. I don't yeah. cut hair. Yeah. But at the same time, like I care about people mm -hmm. so I can be here and know people and yeah. have them come in and send them to my barbers yeah. and just be about, I care about you. Yeah. I love you. I, I want to take care of you. Yeah. And for me, that kind of opened my eyes like, this is how we're gonna run the business now. Hell yeah. This is how I'm gonna run my meetings. This That's is how- That's the right way, dude. Yeah, I'm like, and I, I told people like from day one, I'm like, I'm not a barber, so I apologize because I know nothing about barbering. Mm -hmm. To now it's like, I know nothing about barbering, but this is how we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. I know Hawaii, I know people, I know business. Like yeah. I want to make sure that we treat people right. Mm -hmm. The client is king. Yeah. And you know, like word of mouth is like, we're at Ala Moana. We yeah, have so yeah. many people walking by here all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And I, not that I know a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people know me. Like I'll get a text some days. I'm like, when we first opened, like, bro, it's a circus in there. And I'm like, ooh, what do you mean? Like or some uh, of your friends stop by. And, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, uh, uh, people are like eating in the front and uh, people are like yelling in there. I'm like, Okay, thank you. Like, yeah. I, let me take care of that. And luckily, we took care of that early, but it's still that same thought process of everybody knows everybody here. Mm -hmm. And I can't name who I know. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say I know X, Y, and Z client coming in. I try to when I, I can see it and I know it, mm -hmm. but there's so many people that just come in. Yeah. And I just want everybody to know, like, we're treating everybody good. It's not who I know that we're treating good. We're treating yeah. everybody good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once that became a thing and I realized I need to be kind of more of a face of the company and yeah. more in front of the, you know, yeah. the crowd and, mm -hmm. you know, in front of the issues and the comments yeah. and the, you know, like whatever, mm -hmm. then, yeah. you know, it, it became easier to yeah. manage. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. Right. Until you're fine, until you're able to find someone who can do that that you trust to do that, you kind of got to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and that's, that's kind of <clears throat> where I left the bank because I was, I was managing downtown and I was managing maybe 30 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, not that I didn't want to do that, but I did it and it was great for the time being, but like that wasn't my dream. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so opening a business, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll own it and run it and mm -hmm. manage it. But do I still want to manage 30 people? Probably not. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, well, I guess I have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially if we have multiple locations and- Do you feel like it's different when it's your baby though, compared to like the corporate world? Oh yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It feels like it's your team. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like that. I feel like that's probably how it would feel. So I'll, I'll go into the bank every so often and mm -hmm. be like, are you ever going to be at? Like, and I'm like, uh, probably not. Yeah. It's like, do you still have stress? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, 
it's a different stress mm. yeah. Yeah. and it's actually like probably magnified because now it's yours yeah mm-hmm. yeah right like you can you can do whatever like wor- work is work you know goals are goals like stress is stress but when covid hit like that's a different stress because yeah yeah, you, you can still not pay rent, but like you don't know the repercussions of yeah, not paying rent. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what it was unpredictable. You too. don't know what Alamon is gonna actually do. Exactly. Yeah. And so we were in survival mode, and I mean, good or bad or ugly, like I was lucky. I had other things going on, so like I could make enough money on the notary side, like. I can support the barbershop mm-hmm. by myself. Mm-hmm. Did I want to? No, but I will, I'll do it because you had to survive. I, I care about everybody. Like I'm, yeah. I'm going to still make sure we pay the bills and pay our clients and yeah. pay our employees and make sure like we, we stay open when we can be open. And you, you know, and that's how it's been till today. Do you yeah. have any, um, do you have any OG um, employees that have been around from the beginning? We do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I want to think they, love it here because they're doing well like mm-hmm. yeah. you want to think how barbers you know they can run their own business mm-hmm. like a, a barber here can make easy six figures wow Dang. and then and make tips on top of that like they're making good money like wow Dang. like i was i you was heard that guys yeah. yeah if you're a barber out there looking <laughs> for a job and you exactly. got some talent come by yeah they do tryouts every friday i'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> so like I, how, do, how does it do um like i think christy you asked it but do, does it like a tryout process like how do you how do you hand select the guys that come in here i mean legit well it will like you know kind of just talk to them see like does their vibe fit? Mm. Have them do a couple cuts on clients. Hopefully they bring their own clients so that we can see what happens. And then it's more like, you know. So are they like renting their space? Is that how it works? They rent their own chair? Uh, or? So at Alamoana, we are rents too high that we can't do rentals. Mm-hmm. So we do more commission. Oh. So you're, you're getting paid on what you cut and hopefully like we're busy enough that it it makes sense for you mm-hmm. yeah. and so far like it, it works mm-hmm. um we do rental downtown but again it's more you know case by case basis yeah, yeah, but yeah. so it's kind of like they they um working off of commission so how much how many people they cut and then they get a percentage yeah and then on top of the tips they keep the tips yeah and- yeah 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 yeah, so they're they're making the cuts, they're getting a percentage of that, then they're getting tipped straight to them. Oh, yep. okay, wow. yep. okay. Yeah, and I mean, How I want to think like our, our space is nice. We we try to make sure like we keep it upgraded. We uh, we just did renovations. We got lighting, paint, you know, TVs. Uh, we give free beer, free shots. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah, they they I think they got a good setup where if they wanted to promote that you know get their clients in here of course yeah yeah then they're getting value it, it seems yeah. like you, you you try to make the your customers as most comfortable as possible yeah, you yeah, know, yeah come yeah. here yeah. chit chat get a nice cut get a little buzz you know <laughs> take a shot have cold watch beer the game, <laughs> watch yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah 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 you see all these big tvs here Man. you guys ever use that product up there where you get those big fake um cans the suave seat, <laughs> suave seat. What is i it mean called? we got suave seat though but yeah. Yeah. Have you ever use that i have yeah yeah Fire. Yeah, yeah 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 it's been a while but i have used it before yeah so i mean we we, we do uh lay right suave seat though um yeah. nature that that's kind of our Brandon how was it uh how was it playing baseball at usc <laughs> amazing talk, talk about that like yeah your first day what was it like uh yeah so uh, uh recruiting process is cool because they'll come down see you play call uh, play high school mm-hmm. were you good in high school what yeah, high school dude. Did he was <laughs> he played at USC, a little bro. bit little oh bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah oh yeah what high school uh i played at kamehameha oh okay um, I had a buddy that played with me that was probably the top recruit in the nation. Wow. So how'd you, st- how'd you feel, feel like you stacked up against him? So I always tell the story because he's, he's probably six, two, six, three, uh-huh. like Damn. two thirty in high school. Wow. So built. Like, yeah. And our coach said it like the perfect human specimen. What was your build oh. in high school? I was probably like. 510 170 and what position i played shorts uh short and second wow. short and second. Yeah. those are cool positions right yeah so 
<clears throat> Luckily, like my stats are good. I look good. I played good. Like I, I lined up with everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so we both got recruited. Uh, USC won in 98. So we were a top school. We got in 99. We were ranked number one. Damn. Uh, we had two recruits we, coming from. So both of you, you and your friend got recruited to USC? Oh, yeah. 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 It was perfect. And my sister is already there. Uh-huh. And I actually said I'm never going to USC because I didn't want to follow her again. Uh-huh. So I, I got recruited at LMU. Uh, 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 Texas a and uh, Tulane, and with USC being a top school, I'm like, well, shit, like, if Why it's not? my friend and, you know what I mean, like, and we had a buddy that played volleyball, like, yeah, let's, let's do it, like, why not, yeah, and so when I got there, it was kind of just, you know, Getting to know everything, like yeah. you think they're shit in Hawaii. Yeah, you, you got then a lot you're to in learn. LA, you're yeah. in LA, you're like, oh yeah. shit, there's so LA, another, Hollywood another level, hit man. different. And, dude. The, and the hard <laughs> thing is, like, we were, we have the most national championships in the nation. Damn. And pe- most people don't know that for years. Yeah. Wait, what, what year was this again? It was ninety nine. 99. And then you guys won. Was the football team killing back then too in 99? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay. Reggie so Bush? No Reggie Bush. Carroll, no, dude. Pete, That's like 2005. Pete, Pete Carroll came in that year that we got in there. And so he would come and watch our, our baseball practices and whatnot. Mm. And it was cool to see like him out there because, you know, he's a big name. Yeah, NFL yeah. Coach. yeah. Uh, Troy Polamalu. Oh yeah, yeah. Was actually playing baseball and football at the same time. Uh, so we, we were playing with him, and it it, it was interesting, like because uh-huh. the baseball program was the program, and then football. I mean, uh, football is always football. Football is yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But every school gets behind their football team. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? They they make the money. They're the show. Yeah. But at at the same time, like. We had we had top guys coming in. So Mark Pryor, who's the pitching coach at Dodgers right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the top recruit transferring in from Vanderbilt. Damn. Wow. And your, your team looked stacked coming we, in. We were we were we were amazing. Like yeah. so I'm like coming out of Hawaii, like I'm the top guy here. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna like get in there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I did I did well, but not well enough. So yeah. I kind of just had to wait my time. Mm-hmm. Mm. And good or bad, like I was smart, so I got into the accounting school, mm. which you have to be invited to go there. You you get into business, you get into accounting, yeah. You get invited to accounting, and I'm like, well, you know, like let's just push it every which way, baseball, academics, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it is what it is. Like I'm I'm happy I did both, and you know I'm luckily here with the accounting degree from USC. Yeah. I got my master's from UH. Yep. I played baseball. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So it, it, it was all good. Awesome. Living, living a full life. You yeah, know? Living yeah, a full life, yeah. yeah. How, how uh, were you, were you, how committed to, were you to baseball as a kid? Like what, what, so what I'm trying to get at is like, if a young kid's listening to this, like let them know like what it takes to get to that, to play at SC and shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I credit my dad because I didn't love baseball. I did well from six on to 10 maybe. Mm. And I dominated. So like, yeah, let's play. Like I'll, like, I'll play, I'll hit home runs. I'll, I'll love it. Yeah. But then once you get to a certain age, like it, it becomes hard work. Like yeah. you need to become better. It's competitive. Everyone's you, just yeah, you gotta, good. You gotta be better than everybody. So my dad would push me. I would get ground balls in the street, you know, taking grounders. I would go to the cage every, you know, chance I got to just hit, you know, buckets of balls. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's, it's a grind. I mean, and in Hawaii, you kind of know, like, you're undersized. And unfortunately or fortunately, like, I played at a time where you never knew what kind of power small guys had. At what age did you first start? I, I played at six. Yeah. At six years old? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of late. Like some people play at four or five or like oh. whatever. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, yeah, definitely where I, I hit for power. Mm-hmm. I had the most home runs, but they didn't really want that out of the second baseman at the time. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you got to change your swing. You got to do this and that. You got to yeah. do that. I'm like, mm. wait, what? And it, it was very confusing for me. And that's where... Yeah, again, fortunately or unfortunately, I, I could do academics. Yeah. And I, I knew I was smart. Mm-hmm. I always took AP honors classes and you know, I could I could do I could do whatever. Yeah. 
Mm. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, I should have just pushed baseball because you only have a short time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can always go to school after. You can always go to school. Yeah. You can always, we can go to school right you always, now. You can always work. You can always <laughs> yeah, get a job. You yeah, can always start a business. Yeah. But nobody really tells you that. Exactly. Nobody tells you that. And so yeah. I tell a lot of kids that I meet, like, you know, like, if you're this close, if you have potential, if you have, you know, whatever, yeah. you have one shot to do it. Yeah. You, yeah. you got a short time frame for athletics and good or bad or whatever, like, do it. Yeah. Because then do you, it, go you, don't, for it. you don't want to say, like, I wish I did. Yeah. And then you can't. Like yeah. there, there's no there's no going back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when it takes to get, um, you know, you only get one chance at high school, one chance at college. You know what I mean? So, especially in high school, if you're not making the right moves, you're not even get that chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah There's yeah, so yeah. many talented players yeah. who uh, didn't have the right grades, didn't have uh, whatever opportunities, yeah, you know, or whatever situation. But um, yeah, man, that's cool. What else uh, you do for your free time besides boxing? <laughs> punch me in the face. Yeah, <laughs> I wish. Um, yeah. So I mean, I. Nowadays, it's at all box. I'll go to the gym at Planet Fitness in Kahala. Nice. Because it's brand new and I love it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month. Shout out to Planet yeah, Fitness. Yeah, 10 bucks a month. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. I'll, uh, I'll jump in the water at Kahala Beach and then kind of just uh, plan my day for between the barbershop, notary, mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, I literally just got my tattoo license. So we're going to do scalp micropigmentation. Mm -hmm in the back room right here. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be a new venture where we we have the clientele. It's going to be, you know, it's huge on the mainland. Mm -hmm. It's getting bigger here, but I think once people see it, yeah. and I, I can tell... Oh, he's always a few years behind. Yeah, yeah. and I know... Uh, These boys are going to be jumping on that, I promise I know you. a few They're people that... Forehead tatted. Yeah. Clean line. Are like <laughs> begging me to like, let's do it. I'm like, done. Like, yeah. So once we get the, the license here, like we'll get that going. Um, mortgage rates are terrible, so I'm doing more commercial and investor, mm. DSCR, fix and flip, like all that. So I'll probably be starting my own company in the next few weeks. Okay. Next company, yeah, nice. next month. Like, um, so it is what it is. Like, uh, Do your kids live with you? Yeah, I have them every week. Nice. Every oh. other week. Oh, every other so, week. So, so you're in your 40s, so you do have your father also? I'm a father of a 16 and 14 year old. Are you a bachelor? Uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, I was like, what does that mean? Are you single? Yeah. Single, yeah. Single, yeah, Sorry, yeah. That, was a, yeah. that was a stupid way to ask it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I feel like you'd be one of those guys on like one of those eligible, eligible bachelor shows or something like that. <laughs> Killing he was, he was married. In business, yeah. Sure. Divorced, yeah. divorced yeah. now? Divorced now, yeah. 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 How long were you married? Uh, almost uh, 10 years now. 10 years? Yeah. Damn. And when was the divorce? How long ago was your divorce? Um, seven years ago. Seven years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So we're all good. Like, <clears throat> we understood what happened and yeah. the kids understood. And now we co parent very well. And, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's hard to find that right uh, person, I think, that matches. Yeah. And especially for me, like, not that I want to say I'm that busy, but I have a very busy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's hard to find a person that fits that. Yeah, it's good to have course. a good support system, dude, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean, if you have someone who's amicable and, like, chill, yeah, yeah. it helps. Yeah. yeah Imagine yeah. the opposite. Shit, that would suck. That would suck. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So shout out to all the... Cool exes. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are, are cordial. Um, you guys co-parent. You guys are still semi-friends or or is it just more for the kids? You, uh, how, do you still keep in touch with, with your... My ex? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I think um, our kids are very like active. Mm. So we have to be very active. You got to keep lives. up. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're cordial. I... I made a decision in my life, like if I can say yes, I'm gonna say yes. Mm -hmm. So from day one when it happened till now, if I can say yes, whatever it is, you know, I can if I can do it, if I can pay for it, if I can whatever, manage it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that helped us kind of survive. Mm -hmm. Cause they're both at Iolani. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a cheap school. No, yeah. Expensive school. So um I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work five jobs, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
to make it work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything for your kids. Oh yeah, and and then and luckily, like most people that know me, know like I when I have my kids, I'm not available because I do everything for them. Hmm. I you know pick them up, take them to practice, like hang out with them, train them, take them to the park, take them to the gym, like. And, and so, you know, it is what it is. And then when I don't have them, it's kind of like, yeah, let's, let's figure it out. Let's, mm-hmm. let's do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Are you kind of bummed out when you don't have them? Oh, like, totally. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, shoot, we have so much fun. Yeah. Well, so when, when guys talk about mental health, that's kind of one of the things like it, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Because I legit love my life and I do my life and I, you know, create my life and, work hard for them mm-hmm. and so when i don't have them i feel a little empty and yeah. you know what do i end up doing like I'll, I'll try to work as much as i can but yeah. you know even that's kind of empty yeah. at the end of the day because yeah. you know like mm. it is what it is mm-hmm. and so i've 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 had to find that balance of what do i want to do who would i want to spend it with what mm. do I, you know where i want to go like whatever yeah. yeah and so luckily I've had enough things to keep me busy. Mm-hmm. And obviously I'm adding on more things because yeah. I, I have, I don't have a lot of time, but I have enough time that I can, yeah, do yeah. things. Do more. Yeah. And so for me, if, if they're still in school and they still got to go to college and mm-hmm. I got to still make some money, let me just push it. Yeah. Cause if I have an idea yeah. and yeah. I think I can do it, I'll do it. Yeah. 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 And it's just fun just to stay busy and working on shit. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. just fun just to it's like uh one of my really good um successful friends, he's he just he told me he just loves problem solving. You yeah. know, he just loves to solve problems. And that's how it, and he cashes out on a lot of those. You know what I mean? There you go, yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been interesting because everybody's like, How you well, how do you have time for that? And I'm like, I mean, how does anybody have time for anything, right? Yeah. So you have to make time for I'm shit just you like, want to do. If if there's opportunities to be had and I can figure it out and if it makes it worth my while, let's try it. Mm-hmm. And luckily I have enough uh leeway with everything that I do. Like I can I can do it here. I can I can do this, I can do that, I can try it. Like and so before I'd be like, eh, that's kind of dumb. That's kind of stupid. Like, yeah. why would I do that? Mm-hmm. And then now I'm just like, yeah, I, I can do anything. Like, let's do it. Like, let's mm. try it. And luckily, so far, everything's kind of worked out well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Seems like you're a risk taker. So why not just keep keep trying it? Yeah, yeah keep yeah. adding more stuff. Yeah. Because for Face me, like, that. yeah, just, just, just try it. This, the, the, and you're learning all the time. Yeah, 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 and you're yeah, always yeah. learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, have you lost some? I was scrolling back deep in my phone for I was looking for a certain photo, and um, I saw an old photo of you in the gym from a long time ago, and I was like, man, he was a little thicker back then. Oh, yeah. Have you lost some weight? Like, how much weight do you think you've lost since you started I, training? Uh, I probably lost like 20, 30 pounds. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot, dude. That's 20, a lot. 30 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. You see it, you know, it's noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have you seen any old photos from like, I, I mean, I've seen old photos of myself, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it's a trip. But it's all, it's also like what made me do it because my son was starting to play everything, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Football, so, basketball, baseball. And I'm like trying to train him and mm-hmm. like tell him what to do. I'm yeah. like, Huffing yeah, I, like, <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to tell him and it's yeah. one thing to show him. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. All right. Well, I guess I better get into shape so yeah. I can show him. And so that that helped motivate me. Yeah. And then obviously like, you know, Kili'i. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're always out we're always drinking we're always yeah. eating mm-hmm. and it was just a matter of like bro like how do you how do you stay in shape like how do, how do you do this every night yeah and he was like oh i go to nito and yeah oh and that's when i started and he's like just come by and that's when bubble was still coaching yeah yeah, yeah. just see bubble Shout like out to bubba. whatever yep. yeah and i'm like cool i'll try it like whatever i'm i'm yeah. up i just don't know what to do myself yeah. so yeah. did it loved it did Most, you feel a little nervous when you first came or were you just like, cause I, some people feel nervous when they first come to a, a combat sport gym. Yeah. I, 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 well, I think it was more, I kind of understood it was in Kuala. So like yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. it was more like, how could I handle? Mm-hmm. And then it was the cardio. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. for me, e- even till this day, it's, it's what you put into it. Right. Oh, like, yeah. like, yeah, I, I can go, and push it hard and like be ready to puke. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, in, yeah. in one or you hour. Can just same, go same. Same. Or you can just cruise and do whatever. Yeah. And then like, you can do two, three classes, classes and like, yeah. you know, like it's Easy. cool. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. And, and so a lot of days I'm just like more mentally, like how mad am I? How, how much do I want to just like push it? Yeah. And then that became a thing where like, and I, I, I think I told you the other week, like some days I come in and I, I don't talk to nobody because yeah. like, there's so much going on like yeah. unless they talk to me like yeah. you know Dude, that's how the same way when i was just a member too i think you remember i would come in quiet with my headphones oh yeah on. i like i would because i'm not here to like really hang out yeah. you know i mean like when you come so much it becomes a byproduct you become like family with all these guys mm -hmm. but like when you're first there like i was just trying to work and get out you know what i mean yeah. i like, get my work and get you're out you're there for a reason i like yeah, for yeah. me i was like i'm here to, <clears throat> i'm here to work i'm here to you know, get that cardio in, mm -hmm. get that grind in, just yeah. like beat up on the bag. Yeah. Like, I and mean, we're not here to beat up anybody, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's really just to, you know, let let out that aggression that you don't, you, you can't do it in normal life. Yeah. And for me, I just loved it because then it was, all right, I'll do this here. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the gym, I'll mm -hmm. work out, I'll go to the beach, sit there and just do my emails and Create work. Create a little routine, huh? Yeah, and then it, it became amazing yeah yeah the only thing different is okay so like who do i want to spend it with who do i want to do it with yeah but i mean at the end of the day, i'm like okay i'm doing it for myself so yeah who yeah. cares yeah. yeah absolutely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. How, how have you seen the the gym change over the years since you've been there the gym yeah definitely is more crowded now um I think with social media, it promotes more of a, you know, it, it, it's not combat. It's not aggression. It's not, it's not a, it's not a boxing, boxing, like yeah. trying to kill somebody, Jim. Mm -hmm. It's more of a family, like Ohana, yeah. like you can, you can come and work out and, you know, get to know everybody and yeah. learn the tricks of the trade and, you know, yeah yeah i i think that's where it's it's great yeah 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 it's a cool little group uh in there especially the morning crew and it's so different the morning crew than than the night crew it's interesting yeah i mean I, different crowds but um i only come in the morning really yeah, right? so yeah. like I don't, I don't really know the night but it's it's definitely uh more cr like i would i remember coming at six and seven and be the only person there for yeah, a while me too, yeah 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 yeah. And I loved it because then like you get one on one training. Bubba, yeah, and yeah. Bubba was an awesome coach. <laughs> How long have you been going to your barber? Since I was eighteen years old. That's crazy. How'd Korean. you how'd you first meet her? Uh just randomly. I, I used to I'm very particular with my hair. Yeah. And uh I realized uh, Koreans know how to create Cut no, Korean Koreans hair. know how to cut Korean hair. The texture. You guys got... You Look guys at my hair. Look, I'm telling you, I'm never hair. gonna go bald. Ever. Do you guys get furby so, hair? Well, did you did your dad have a nice hair head of hair before? Uh, my mom. I got it from my mom. Oh. Yeah, my dad. Well, well anyway, mm. usually usually genetically it comes from the mom. Side. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so if that. your mom has thin hair, most likely you're gonna go bald. Yeah. And then if you do have bald hair, it's from your mom's chromosomes. Nice. But uh, I was fortunate to have full flock of hair. Nice. You can tell by my forehead, it's a lot smaller than the normal. Yeah, definitely. It'll be good to have a receding hairline, you know, look like I have a bigger forehead, but yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Really good. The one third, one third mixes. Uh, yeah, not for me, though. <laughs> More for a female. You, uh, you know? <laughs> one third, one third, one third. <laughs> oh, inside man. Joke, inside joke. Hey, Kellen, man. So we, we have a guest book over here. Yes, sir. Guess How many one. guests are we in? We're like 14 Dude. now. We got like up to 14 people. We don't had. mind signing it, you know. Let's see how many. I think we were up to 15, 16 guests. Let's oh, go. man. Premier Barbershop. Championship Mindset. Kellen. Okay. Man. Anything right over there. Anything. Do you want to adjust uh, this mic too? Real quick? Oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. No, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oh. What does everybody else put? Oh. Oh, I haven't even read that. I want to take a look at that book, by the way. I, I haven't even read some of the stuff. I saw okay. somebody was holding it and writing for a minute. I was like, what the hell are they writing in there? 
They just write in. You, you don't even have to write anything. You can just sign your name. I was just say, I actually get my notary stamp and then I can just like, Yeah, that'd be <laughs> sick, dude. Our whole book notarized. <laughs> that'd be so sick. Hell yeah, man. It's been a fucking yeah. sick one. Yeah, kind of like a baseball card. Thank, Thank you, yeah. you Kelly. Yeah, Premier Barbershop. Premier Barbershop. Two locations. Alamoana. Downtown. Yes, Bethel and Street. Alamoana. Man, there you go. if you need a crispy lineup, if you need the ones and twos, a smooth fade, if you're looking busted right now, slide through the Premier Barbershop there and get you your also, shit lined he up. He does do tattooing now, right? Tattoo. If your hairline's receding, yeah. tell him, Kellen. He sure can throw a baseball. Don't forget that. So don't try to run away. He'll get you with the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Pay your tab. Oh, whatever it's called. Oh, okay. Thank you very Thank you, much. Brother. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the gym soon, yeah? I will. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, let's go. Oh. Good job.